Okay, it's very good. It's excellent. Um, just tell me about this piece. I mean, it's an extraordinary departure. If you think that one of maybe the last major work he'd written before had been the Archduke Trio, which is middle Beethoven, it's performance Beethoven. Now he takes us into an absolutely new world with this piece, which was written before Opus 101. Um, okay, describe, if you had to describe the first few bars to somebody, how would you describe them? Um, I think it's kind of like a little kid who got lost and looked for her mom. <laughs> like, he, he has no clue. I tell you, the unexpected is always welcome. <laughs> Okay, but in musical terms, how would you describe it? What, what is the relationship uh, of your first phrase to the piano's first phrase? Um, tender, pure. Yeah, but what's the relationship? Oh, um, <laughs> it's definitely tender and pure, that's absolutely right. Relationship, um, like, so. What's the relationship between your first phrase and the piano's first phrase? She's answering. <laughs> in what way? Is she doing different material? Is she doing the same material? Is she? What's she doing? Um, the last so far, where she answers it the same. Yeah, and? And then um, she, uh, the. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then? No. OK, I'll tell you. Um, I've got to give a lecture about this piece next year, so <laughs> I can practice for it. OK, so what I think Beethoven is doing here and why I thought the way you played the first phrase was, was wrong, um, you played it very freely, like a rhapsody. But actually, it's not. What Beethoven does is falling fourth by scale. That's the first idea. And then this with a rising fifth, second idea. And then third idea like a question and the piano comes in she does the third idea the second idea the first idea so it's and everything in the piece really just about everything comes from those three ideas including which is rising fifth which is the inversion of and then you get and so on Everything can be, it's a new way of writing music that Beethoven, and it's not just, it's funny, I find for myself that although I use lots of images for most music, Schumann, Schubert, Haydn, even Beethoven, I just, it's just the, it's such pure music, especially this sonata. The, of course, you're absolutely right, it's pure and tender, but it's, what's fascinating is to just describe what he's doing, how it's composed, and that in itself, it's the purest music. So if you go, you know, sort of like a, a, an emotional rhapsody, it isn't. It's on another, it's not of this world, it's of another world, this pure air we want. And somehow you get in the way, I think. If you start changing the tempo or adding vibrato you don't really mean or slides you don't really mean, um, this is the purest music. I mean, I think he chose C major. He's going back to the basics of music, which composers often do in their later years. They, they sort of peel away the unnecessary, and you have the core of music. And really, this is a sort of, it's a very, very special piece. It is really the gateway to late Beethoven. Um, so don't get in the way. You know, don't put in emotions that the, the harmonies do not imply, I think. OK, let's begin again. Okay, it's beautiful, even though it's on steel strings. Um, no, it's beautiful, it's beautiful. But why the extra 16th or 8th? You go, three, one, two. It's all one. It's just there. You know, the moment you put in something, you do something to it, which changing the rhythm is doing something, we get taken down from that world. Mm. 
Yeah. Okay, sorry to be fussy. It's be it's lovely. I told you it's beautiful enough times. Just take it, it's beautiful. Um, but your bow is not obeying you. Again, you're going... Your bow f wants to get to the front. It doesn't need to. Uh, there's no event on that G. And then you go... What's the most important note there of that second bar? Which one? Which one? There's three of them. Exactly. Okay, so your bow goes at one speed. You phrase with the bow towards that third G. I can tell you feel it right, but your bow isn't, isn't obeying you. So always, I mean, that's our main way of phrasing is with bow speed. Then you'd sing it, and it's still sorry. I'm being fussy, but it's still too long on the first G. It's lovely. What's he doing here? So the piano has answered you in, so you know, retrograde, <laughs> palindrome. Then what happens? What does he do? Um, ask you a question, I think. <laughs> Definitely, absolutely right. In what way? But musically, I mean, you know, in terms of the material, what is he doing? Um, kind of, uh, I don't know. Um, Asking like in a really polite, nice way. <laughs> no, <laughs> really not. <laughs> you don't have to be polite in heaven, which is where he is. Um, you can be rude as you like to angels, I'm sure. They won't take offence. Um, no, what he's doing, he takes this second idea. And he asks the fifth, the seventh, the ninth, which is the unexpected one. So fifth, seven. again, he, as I say, he's back to the basics, absolute basics of music. And again, if you, one has to sort of understand, well, if one's going to read a story and make it, make it understandable, which is our, our function, that's, what, that's our purpose, is to make the story understandable to the, to the listener, then you have to understand what he's doing. And that's all he's doing. And it's not that he's doing a lot, he's doing very, very little. Okay, so just with that in mind, just think fifth, seventh, ninth, just building blocks. I mean, I think you're right in a way about the child. There's a child, it's a, a childlike simplicity, but I don't think he's lost. He may, he's maybe asking questions. But, uh, just from, because it was much about that. Uh, yeah, but no hurry. No stress. Where does this come from? It's after the first fermata. I mean, I personally, if it's entirely up to you, I would go up the G string because I want to feel the space of the ninth. You've got the fifth, seventh, ninth. And if you just go, I think this is a perfect place for a slide. Ah, Beethoven spent all summer working on this piece with, with the cellist, Linke, who was the first to play it. If only Linke had written something. 
He worked with Schubert, he worked with Beethoven on all the Beethoven late works, and he never, as far as I know, he never wrote anything, which is frustrating. But I suspect that Beethoven would have sanctioned that. But again, it's entirely up to you what fingering you do. But tell me, what happens after the fermata? Where does this come from? Obviously. The, the five. Well, it goes into it's it's the first first theme again, but it's it's no longer at home. It's going towards F major. It's the same. Yeah, so, but it's you know it's just one remove from home. Okay, and then you get something new. It's even more, you know, it's a little intensifying. It's a little more. Okay, so you have to listen to that. Okay, just do it. But exactly the same tempo as the opening, everything, semplice. Tenaramente semplice. From... You don't have to do it on the D, G string if you don't want. It's fine. Yeah, sorry. It's just your bow dies. You go... As if, the, as if you don't want the phrase to go on. Huh? Sorry. The bow must be constantly living, living, living. Now listen, don't read. Okay, but listen, she answers the question. You've been asking this question. And the piano answers. And you, and then you ask the question again. You are not satisfied. But you, you drowned her out. You were not principal voice there. The piano is principal voice. All that. Um, have to hear and you have to listen to it and then you question yeah from that from yeah I didn't hear you I didn't hear you go with the phrase though that's the first cadence into C we have and you went. It's not the. It's not the same. You have a fresh. You have the answer, the cadence, and then you have a question. So one has to hear that. So, okay. Tension. We're in heaven. We of heaven. So there, if you go, that's not that's out of the spirit, isn't it? Uh, so now you just get the seventh and the ninth. Uh, one more time. And listening. Don't look. It's much better when you look up. It was good when you looked up. Really? 
And really... I mean, you know, I don't mind the slide, but make it light so it's not doesn't intrude. But hey, your bow wasn't listening. Um, uh, and then, can you play it? Take over. And then you answer yours. Then you get to answer. What's the relationship between this third phrase and the second phrase? I'll tell you, it's exactly the same. It's just re scored. It's exactly the same phrase. So we have the same, you gain, he asks, he asks, and he answers, and then it goes on. Okay, one more time, but listen with your bow, which, by which I mean follow the shape of the piano melody. Now, just from, yeah, where you have your G. But just you can always avoid a slide, and you know it's precious cargo a slide, a glissando. Just like as I've often said, a kiss. Don't go around kissing everybody; then you don't mean it. Choose the people to kiss. Get to the, the heel, the frog. Frog, as you say, the frog. Here. You wouldn't sing it like that. You would sing. Wouldn't you? How about? Okay. Don't let your bow rule you. You rule your bow. Okay, one more time. And you still did. Not as much. But you don't need to do it. And you don't mean it. What's happening here? Um. It changes. Instead of going, it goes on. What happens? Um, it's closing. It's progressing. You have, but the piano has other ideas. Yara, yara. So he goes, relative minor and dominant. Okay, all these things. Or events. I mean, when music is this still and peaceful, that you know, that's an event. It's happening. You have to feel the different colours. Uh, just from the end, somewhere in the end of the phrase. Yeah, maybe just here. Relative minor, dominant, and the piano goes. But no writ. Now it's in three voices. Ecstatic, quietly ecstatic. Yeah, okay, but even the trill has to listen. So now we have the opening, but it's in three voices. The three voice choir. So that you and then and the piano has the first sort of real um, traumatic accidental with a crescendo. Now, now here and three voices. A 
somewhere else. Okay, so it's, it's, you know, it's, it's very quiet, but it's absolutely ecstatic. And the ecstatic means... Now, what happens after this? Because I know we have to finish, don't we? Three minutes we have. Okay, I, I know you're loving these questions. Uh, <laughs> sorry. W what happens from this point on? Harmonically. Just tell me harmonically. You can make a phone call. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you. From this point on, it's just C major for the whole rest of the andante. It doesn't, it's home. So it's completely peaceful. So don't try and make it emotional, whatever, or free. It's not. It's just completely simple. Uh, let's go from the... <laughs> It's one chord. That's all it is. <laughs> Absolute peace. And if you sort of, you know, if your slide is too much or you rush towards it or you vibrate too much, you've brought us down to earth. You don't want to be brought down to earth. Just there. Sorry. Don't look at it. Yeah, but it's, it's too fast. Yeah. Sorry, I was having fun playing along. Right? <laughs> Karaoke night. Because it, you, know, you have this phrase three times over. And if you do a writ at the end of every one, it's going to come very predictable. Uh, sorry, I'm being very tough on you. It's for your own good. Uh, so, ah, now I'm starting to do slides I don't mean. Because she comes in on the syncopation. If you've done a big writ, it's no longer a syncopation. One more time. Second time, and third time. Final question and answer. Um, I, again, you've asked, I mean, it's so magical the way he does that. Uh, and there. Uh, he ornaments it. And then the final answer. She asks, or final phrase. And you say yes. two favorite pizzicatos in all of the cello repertoire, except for the ones in the D major sonata, which are also incredible. And you say yes. You know, you answer that. Okay, I made my points. I mean, go back to this sonata with you play the piano. Good. Sit at the piano. It was the first piece I ever sort of analyzed like this, just, and it's fascinating to see what he's about. And that tells you the emotions, the story of the piece, just looking at what you know, getting into his mind is the same as getting into his heart. It really is. And the simplicity and beauty. All right, thank you. Very good. Thank you.